Call the 21st meeting of the 2012-2013 Common Council meeting to order. Will clerk please read the quote of the day. Thank you. Before anything else, preparation is the key to success. <laughs> <laughs> Call the roll please. Fifteen present. Quorum is present. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Motion to, for approval of the minutes, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Is there any changes or additions? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Bill? Bill? Lost his clicker. Lost his clicker. There we go. <laughs> okay, thank you. 15 eyes. Motion carries. Mayor's appointment, city attorney. He will. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your confirmation. These are members of the Business Improvement District Pamela Butler Channel, uh, Ryan Moeller. David Gass, Tom Brickley, Mike Vandersteen, Eileen Simons, William Holbrook, Larry Schaefer, David Hanneman, David Sanderson, and Chad Pelichick. All uh, terms uh, being appointed tonight and expiring for the first two in uh, December 31 of 2014, the next three, December 31st, 2013, the next three, 2014. 14, the next two, 2013, and Chad Palachek, December 2014. Signed by the mayor. These are just putting us in line with the bid district's new bylaws. We'll have it lie over till the next meeting. Public forum, city clerk. None this evening. One. No one. Okay. Mayor's announcements. Moving on. Consent agenda, 2 1 through 2 7. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I move to uh, accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adopt all our O's, accept all and pass all committee reports, and pass all resolutions and general ordinances. Is there any discussion? 2 1 through 2 7. Any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 3-1 will be referred to public protection and safety. Report of officers, 4-1 through 4-13 will all be referred. Resolutions, 5-1 by Alderman Reisler to repeal resolution number 139 Eleven twelve, approving the combined dispatch services between the city and county, city of Sheboygan and the county. Alderman, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Thanks. Been moved and seconded to have the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Thirteen ayes, one no, and one abstention. Motion carried. 5 2, a resolution by Alderman Donahue Van Akron Vanderwilly waiving the residency requirements in order to hire an assistant deputy finance director. Alderman Donahue. Um, thank you, Mayor. I would uh, uh, move that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Second. <coughs> and move and second that the, the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Cuff. 
Thank you, Mayor. I'm looking for a commentary from Attorney Steve McLean, please. Uh, Steve? The only comment I would have, I guess, is uh, there's currently a resolution outstanding uh, that all non-represented employees of the city uh, need to reside in the, in the city. There were people that were grandfathered in that were lived outside the city prior to that resolution being put in place. Um, but that applies to uh, all the non-represented employees except the department heads. There's a separate uh, general ordinance in place that uh, requires uh, department heads of the city to reside in the city as well. Um, I guess from a legality standpoint, uh, the, the resolution here would be to carve out an exception of the current residency requirement for the assistant uh, deputy finance director. I guess it's really a policy decision on the council part. Alderman Kopp, any other questions? Or does that answer your question? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. I was wondering if we could open up the floor to our HR manager, Sandy Rorick, so she could uh, cover the recruitment efforts for this uh, position. Uh, what the salary range is, what the job requirements are, and if they have any pending, anybody pending that they want to hire for this position. Thank sure. you. We don't need an actual motion to open the floor, to Department Heads. Sandy? Good evening. Our recruitment efforts. Excuse, can you explain for the audience out there who you are and what your title here is? I'm Thank the you. Human Resources Manager for the city. I've been with uh, the city for a little over a year now. Uh, I've been in Sheboygan for about eight years. I've had very good success in my previous position recruiting for different types of professional positions. This position is challenged. Our pay range is a, is a bit low to recruit somebody who has the needs for this position. In other words, controller-like experience. A four-year degree is required plus specific experience dealing with budgets and financials of a large organization of our size. Our recruitment efforts included posting it in the paper, online with job service, the Wisconsin Net, and career builders. And within our uh, scope of this advertisement campaign, residency has been an issue. We've had quite a few people call and say, is residency required? If it is, I'm not submitting my application. We had 22 applicants of which we have a very small pool of actual qualified candidates which is uh, not sufficient in my opinion. Alderman Bourne. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Sandy, what's the, uh, what's the salary range for this position? And the other thing, of course, we have a pretty good benefit package uh, also for this position. Uh, and in the past, at least in the last four or five years, for at least for department heads, we've had most of our department heads have come have come from outside the city of Sheboygan. Uh, and I, I know when we were uh, <coughs> recruiting a fire chief, I believe we had 40 applicants, and I believe all those people knew that residency was a requirement. And yet, for this, for this position, there seems to be difficulty where in the last four or five years, we, we don't seem to have difficulty getting people to come in here in leadership or semi-leadership positions. One of the challenges is this is not a department head. We believe that this will be a successor to the department head. So we're looking for someone at that top level capabilities, and yet we can't offer the pay. In the general market that we have candidates coming from, their pay is maybe 90 to 100, and our salary range starts at 65. So 65 to 77 is our midpoint, and people aren't willing to, to leave their job for that. As far as the benefits, Sheboygan County, Sheboygan City, the benefit that we, we give here is certainly a very respectable package, but we compete with other private industries that offer better, better benefit packages. Alden Mavorn, any other questions? Just one follow-up, and that right now, you don't have anybody that you wanna hire, so we're, we're uh, we're doing away with the residency requirement, but we actually don't have a, you don't actually have a candidate right now. Is no, we that don't. Right? We want to increase our candidate pool, 
by lifting this requirement. Any other questions for Sandy before we let Sandy go? Any questions for Sandy? Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Sandy, at, at the meeting we talked about uh, the residency requirement as a whole a little bit as well as specifically in this position. Can you just, I guess, elaborate on first off this position, how long have we been trying to fill this and I guess a little bit of the timeline involved in the attempts to fill this position as well as any other positions that residency has caused a problem or is potentially going to cause a problem uh, throughout the city. Um, and I guess in your opinion, do you feel that having this residency restriction is beneficial to the city or harmful to our efforts? I guess all three of those and I'll just let you answer. I'll, tr I'll try to answer. I'll, this position started with a recruitment effort for a senior accountant back in the fall. As we started moving forward in the process, we started asking our deputy director of finance what her retirement uh, plans are and we're able to narrow it down a little bit more further that we know that we need a more advanced candidate. So our recruitment efforts started to uh, enhance themselves this basically in December and in January. Um, so we've been trying, if you want to say, for six months specific to this title for about three months. What was number two? Other positions. <laughs> Other positions. Yeah. Uh, I definitely would feel that this would cause some issues within the, the non-represented pay groups in that some people have relocated, some people are still challenged with it, some have not applied because of it, and uh, there would be some internal uh, issues with people that have moved and are having some hardships with it. It's specifically, one spouse is in another city, one spouse has a residency requirement where they live, and it's, it's challenging. We have people that have left during my time here because their spouse could not move. We have other people who have children with special needs who can't just up and relocate them. So it's, it's challenging, and creating one position with it will have some hardships. There's no doubt. Your third one was? In your opinion, do you feel this is beneficial or detrimental to the city to continue with this? My, my opinion comes from I want to hire the best candidate. That's my professional goal is always to get the best candidate for the job and the one that will stay, the one that fits both with us and, and that we feel does the job. So I do feel that this will enhance our opportunities to get more candidates. Any other questions for Sandy before we move on? Alderman Reisler. I just have a quick one. Um, we talked um, via email and stuff about some other locations and their residence requirements and just uh, on a quick opinion, like the majority of them have uh, a city requirement <coughs> or does it seem like they've really kind of established a larger area to enhance their pool? Residency came up about six months ago and, and was voted down in this council. And I did do a poll question with other municipalities, both city and county, and it so sounds like about 67% do not have residency. Of that, 42% have no residency whatsoever, and 26% require the top administrator of the county or the city, as well as the police chief and fire chief to, to stay in. So the majority do allow people to live wherever they're gonna live. Any other questions of Sandy before? Thank you. Alderman Lassard. My questions were answered, thank you. Alderman Donahue. Thank you. <coughs> um, this uh, matter came up before uh, salary and grievances, and it is a difficult question, and this council uh, has, in my short time here, wrestled with issues relating to residency. In fact, last September, um, we tried to abolish the residency requirement pretty much in its entirety without success. Now, um, bringing this forward uh, not that much uh, after the fact um, is because of some fairly extraordinary circumstances that exist right now uh, with respect to this position and the retirement of Nancy Buss, who is uh, um, the uh, 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 deputy finance director controller, treasurer, you know, goddess of the earth, you know. <laughs> uh, Nancy uh, wears many hats and uh, wears them all exceptionally well. 
The problem is, as articulated by Sandy, is we're having significant difficulty in recruiting a good candidate. The answer that, that Sandy gave tonight, they were all good answers, but the one that really impressed me the most is we're here to hire the best person. And that really has to be our overarching concern. Are we hiring the best person? And we have from good authority, from Sandy and from Jim Amodio, that the pool of candidates is, is shallow uh, in, with respect to candidates who either are willing to move into the city or who already live here. I'm gonna to suggest to you tonight that waiving the residency requirement in this particular instance is one, exceptional, but two, is exceptionally necessary and, uh, and strongly urge you to support the waiver of the residency requirement in this one situation for tonight. Why is it? <clears throat> I came to town, back to town in 1981 and I don't think I got to City Hall to ask Nancy Buss my first question until about 1983. When I asked Nancy all of these questions over the years, I'd call up and I'd say, Nancy, do you remember back in March of 1992? And Nancy said, well, of course. Here was the issue, here was the, here was the resolution. Uh, what else can I tell you? Nancy, can you send me some, the answer is in the mail. Nancy has institutional memory that in addition to her job qualifications is extremely important to the financial health and success of the city. Now, this job description for the person that we're going to hire, this is a job that Nancy is doing in addition to her own current job just because of the way the department um, has uh, been reconfigured. Um, <clears throat> there are 17 uh, job duties. Thankfully, I will not read them all. Um, but they are fairly compelling in terms of the uh, breadth and depth of knowledge that is required. Um, my personal favorite is prepare difficult financial and other reports for the city system and outside agencies is required. I don't know who prepares the non-difficult reports. Um, <laughs> Not so easy, preparing information requested by the Committee on Finance, Salary and Grievance, and others as requested, supervising and opening closing procedures of the financial system, internal auditor of journal entries, financial statements, treasury cash flow, cash, man cash management. She's responsible for grant administration, including file maintenance, pre-audit inspection, and final audit. It does go on. Um, in addition, <clears throat> right now Nancy is, um, She's the city's investor. So money that the city has to invest, Nancy is doing. Um, she, is, uh, she opens and closes all of our tax incremental districts. Um, she submits final uh, financial resolutions and ordinances and answers all questions from other city employees that need some history for their particular issue. This is a big job. We need somebody really qualified in this job but the second part is we need Nancy Buss to train this person to be able to do this job. Nancy's not going to be able to transfer all of her history and all of her knowledge within the eight or 10 month period of time that there might be, it might be longer, it might be shorter. But now is the time to start that <coughs> transfer of information as well as training for what is really a, a difficult job. So we're having trouble hiring. We may have better luck if somebody who lives in Howard's Grove or Keele or Kohler or the town of Sheboygan who doesn't want to sell a house, relocate children, but would like to have this job and has that, those, that skill set and can work with Nancy over the next few months to transfer that, at least part of that basis of information. That's why I'm strongly urging you in this one single instance to waive the residency requirement. Now, Sandy points out that we have other residency issues. I believe that the Salary and Grievance Committee, I spoke with our chair, and we are willing to really look into what the best practices are for residency requirements for municipalities and really determine whether or not we can live with our residency requirement whether it should be modified, who it should apply to, that can go on down the road so that we can apply equity in these decisions across the board. But for now, I would suggest to you, we have 
Mm, crisis is probably a, a, a bit of a strong word. Emergency is probably a bit of a strong word, but if we wait another month or another two months or another three months, those words will be good descriptors for the situation the city is going to find itself in. So I've talked a lot, but I feel real strongly about this one, and I hope you'll support um, salary and grievances bringing this forward to you. Thanks. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'd just like to echo a few comments. I, too, um, think this is, and I probably would use the word critical just because of the functions that this position entails. Even with an eight to ten month lead time, we are never going to get to the point where whoever takes over that position knows what Nancy knows. We just resign ourselves to that. The second por uh, portion of that is we do need to find the best talent. First off, there's not a lot of accountants out there. Um, believe it or not, there's actually a shortage in the industry of accountants. And there's even fewer accountants that have government accounting um, backgrounds. So we're going to try to find a controller level person that has some form of government accounting experience, have them come into a position. Now, if somebody lives in Minnesota or in Michigan, sure, they're going to move here because it, it's required. Or not required, but it's practical. But if somebody lives in Howard's Grove or Keel or Kohler, as, as Alderman Donahue said, why would we make them move into the city? when they're the best qualified. It just doesn't make any sense to me why we would do that. So I'm going to support this um, wholeheartedly. I think we need to get um, somebody into that position so that they can start um, training and learning. Um, and hopefully, um, by the time Nancy um, does um, finally retire, we will at least have 70% of the knowledge she has <laughs> dumped into somebody um, going forward. So. Um, I would encourage everybody to support this. Um, I get it. I understand the why people like the residency requirement. It's just not practical in this situation. You have a small pool of talent when you're just trying to focus in Sheboygan. Um, if we can expand that, you know, even 20 or 30 miles, um, I think we're going to find some great candidates. So um, appreciate it. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one thing Sandy said about the salary is not really competitive. Uh, has there been any thought of making the salary competitive so that we do get more qualified candidates? I guess I'd ask Sandy or Mr. Amodia that question. Jim, can you, Jim or Sandy? The, the position was advertised as an assistant deputy director. One way to, to change that would be to advertise as a deputy director, which would be the same position. Uh, we certainly wouldn't bring in anyone above the pay level of what we're paying Nancy. Uh, and that, that alone, Nancy is making somewhere in the 90,000 range. And that's a challenge to get somebody with that kind of experience that Mr. Hammond was talking about. Some, some might come for that, but it's, it is a challenge. If I could just follow up, uh, that person that you're going to hire is going to be coming into the job knowing that pretty soon they're going to be in that position. So within eight, ten months, a year, that person is going to be, if not up to the level Nancy is because of her seniority, is certainly going to get a bump once that person takes over that position. Is that being made clear to the candidates? Mm -hmm. They would have to, in some cases, take a pay decrease for then getting a pay increase in about a year. Any other questions, Alderman Bone? Any qu other questions of Sandy while she's there? Alderman Billander. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm, I like uh, Alderman Hammond and uh, Alderman Donahue. I'm going I'm to support this for the, the reasons that have already been stated. but. Um, I'm curious to uh, the Salary and Grievance Committee, and if you have thought about this, Sandy, too, you're, you're kind of you're going to set a precedent here if this should pass, with an exception. Um, you could theoretically argue the same thing over and over again with other opportunities or positions that come open, and we would have the same discussion. So, you know, I'm wondering if, you know, if, if the thought through Salary and Grievance is to re consider the uh, residency requirement as a whole because of 
you know, if, if we do make this exception of, of all the unintended consequences that are going to result as it relates to this with your personnel. If we pass this tonight, then we owe it to the employees who have expressed concern to me, to their department heads, to do a, a formal review as Alderman Donahue has recommended. Any other questions? No, thank, thank you. you. Alderman Lewandowski. You can stay seated. Okay. Well, my, I'm not going to support this, and I basically have one reason for that. And uh, a couple weeks ago, we came up with ideas for a job description for the mayor. And one of the things on the job description for the mayor was to promote Sheboygan as a good place to live and to work. And I don't see how we can tell the mayor well, he should promote the city as a good place to live when we as a group are saying the opposite and saying, well, this job is open, but you don't need to live here. We are not promoting Sheboygan as a good place to live then if we approve this. So I'm going to be voting against this. Thank you. Any other questions for Sandy? Thank you again, Sandy. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll the clerk will call the roll. All right, we're on five and I vote is to waive. The I vote is to go along with the committee report no, the recommendation I to waive the. To w it's a resolution to waive the residency to hire. This position, right. The assistant deputy. We're accepting the committee's report. That was fast. <laughs> Seven eyes, eight noes. The motion failed. 5-2 by Alderman Donahue, Van Akron, Van Der Willey. Oh, I'm sorry. 5-3 through 5-8 to be referred. 6-1, a committee report from law and licensing recommending taxi license driver number 5959, taxi driver's license number 5902, Alderman Van Der Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adapted. It's been moved and seconded that the committee report be accepted to dock and under discussion on the Manvana work. Is Amy Bel Belikovich here this evening? She is not here. Um, she was invited to appear before our committee two different occasions and she did not, so we had to deny her five to zero. Is there any discussion on the committee <coughs> report, 6-1? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carried. Six two committee report from law and licensing denying beverage operators license number eighty nine twenty seven. Alderman Van der Willey. Okay, move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Van der Willey. Is Kendra Udovich here this evening? She is here. Um, the committee um, had heard from the assistant city attorney as to her her record, and in 2011, she had an OWI due to drugs. In 2011, she had possession of THC. 2011, possession of drug paraphernalia. And in 2012, possession of THC. And in 2012, also another possession of drug paraphernalia. Um, the committee did vote five to zero to deny, and she is still on probation. Uh, we just felt that at this time, it was a bit too soon after her recent violations to um, give her a beverage operator license. The operator is here. Would you like to address the council? And could you come up to the front, please? Thank you. Um, I have two letters of recommendation, if you wouldn't mind, if you want to look at them and read them. Um, I've been working at the same gas station for two years, and it's my only form of income. I'm trying to get my uh, HSED and go to college. In order to do that, I need a job to pay for it. I also have bills and rent, and I just, I need my job. Any questions of the applicant, Alderman Kopp? Oh, not of the applicant. Oh, 
Any questions of the applicant before we go on? Alderman Van Acker. If, if for some reason you wouldn't be granted your license, would that affect your employment at the gas station? Yes, it would. Okay, so in other words, you would lose your job there? Yes. Correct. Okay. Also, the, the history that was given, 2011, there was three charges that were given in 2012. Were those all separate incidents, or was uh, that all stemming from two, two. Incident, incidents together? Two incidents. So the, the three things in 2011, the OWI, the possession of uh, um, THC and the paraphernalia was one combined incident. Yes. And then in 2012, the possession of paraphernalia as well as possession of THC again was one incident, not yes. separate. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Where did you say you currently are employed? Um, I work at, I, well, I used to work at the Clark Station on North and 15th. Okay. Alderman? No, not for the applicant. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Alderman Lassard. You said that you worked for two years in this position? Yes. And why is it now, how were you able to work there for two years and not have a beverage license and now you, if you don't have one, you can't work there anymore? I've, I had my beverage license. Um, I came back to renew it and it ended up being that I, I got my probationary license and then I was given my letter that I wasn't able to get my permanent license renewed. So you're the only one on site? Yes. There's no one to supervise you so you could keep your job? No. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Alderman Reisler. Thank you. Uh, your probation agent's aware that you're uh, working at this location? Yes, she is. And she doesn't have a problem with you working at the location with the liquor or the sales or anything? Have you had any problems at work with any problems with sales of, of alcohol or liquor? No. And just asking for a guesstimate of your sales and your job, how much of that actually deals with alcohol or liquor? 5%, 10, 15, you know? Um, with liquor, I'd probably say anywhere from 20 to 30. Okay. And, and you are working at the Clark Station now or you were? Um, I was up until this all happened. Would you get your job back if you got your license back? Yes, I've already been guaranteed it. Okay. That was a Clark Station on 15th and North? Yes. Any other questions of the applicant? Thank you very much. Alderman Bourne. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, who are the letters of recommendation from? And my second question for the committee chairman is, did you get a recommendation directly from the probation officer whether it was all right for her to uh, work in this situation. City Clerk, will you? Would wanna... you like, it's just a paragraph each. Do you want me to read them or? Well, who they're from. They're not yeah. very long. Okay. Um, one of them is from Ashandra Sakar. Okay, Kendra has been an employee at my store for two year, over two years. She is a hardworking individual who brings a good work ethic and a smile to work with her every day. She has never had an underage sale and has always been very kind and helpful to the customer. She's trustworthy and reliable. To find another employee like her would be extremely hard. Please reconsider the licensing committee's decision and allow her to renew her beverage operator's license. Is she the manager of the store? I'm not the manager. No, is this the lady? That's the owner. The owner of the store, okay. That would answer your one question. And then there's a Teresa Snow. I've known Kendra for several years. I know her to be hardworking, honest. I admire her integrity and kindness. She has never done anything that would harm another person and shows much thoughtfulness in her dealing with others. I have known her to go out of her way to help others. She deserves a chance to make a living. It seems to me she's just trying to get by. Same as the rest of us, Kendra is a very good young person and deserves a chance to continue with her job. And answer your questions, Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We had one for the committee chairman about the probation yes. officer. We did not. And did you get a recommendation from the police department on this individual? No recommendation. Okay. Any other questions? Alderman Reisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As in the past, I've been very liberal on most of these, and I guess I, I, I'm going to probably be again. Um, I, I realize that this young lady has made a lot of mistakes. Uh, but she's on probation, and that's actually going to be the best supervision that we have, better than what this committee or 
or the council's going to do. So that that person's going to um, obviously hold her to the fire a little bit more than what we even are. So I guess for that reason, I'm going to vote no. Any other? Alderman Kaff. Oh, I'm sorry, you, it was on. <laughs> um, uh, Ms. Yudovich had a 2011 OWI with drugs, a 2011 possession of THC, a 2011 possession of drug paraphernalia, a 2012 possession of THC, and a 2012 possession of drug paraphernalia. The police department also recommended to deny. They did not give a recommendation for her license. So with the police recommendation and of these things, um, I will, and the committee voted five to zero. Uh, I, I will move, I will vote two to nine. Any other discussion? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I too was at the committee meeting and we all voted against this. These, in the last two years that she's worked for this company, in the last two years she's gotten all these charges, we all thought about it, chatted about it, and I will not support her getting her license. Any other discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. A I vote will be to support the committee report to deny. Correct? Yes. Eight ayes, seven noes. Motion carries to deny the application. Six three from law and licensing recommendation recommending denying beverage license number ninety eight twenty nine. <coughs> Alderman Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Is Kathleen Schrader here this evening? She's not here. Um, because of one of her convictions back in 2004, she is ineligible for us to even um, issue a license, so we had to deny it. Any discussion? Very none. Clerk will call the roll. Fifteen eyes. Motion carried. Six four from law and license recommendation from law and li licensing to deny taxi cab driver license number seventy seven sixty. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. I move that the RSC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved, seconded that the committee report be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderwill. Is Brenda Valerio here this evening? She is present. Um, her convictions or violations in two thousand. In 2010, where was a violation of traffic control. In 2010, um, operating after suspension. And also in 2010, too fast for conditions. In 2011, operating after suspension. And in 2012, speeding, um, going 20 plus over the limit while she was driving a taxi cab. The committee voted four to one to deny. I see the applicant is here. Would you like to speak to the council, please? I do respect um, the decision that was Can taken. You, there you go. Thank I do you. respect the decision that was taken past Tuesday. Excuse my voice, I'm kind of sick. Um, but up until that last speeding ticket that I got heading into Kohler, um, prior to that, even though I had, even though I had a hard lesson to learn, you know, it cost me a lot financially with the fines and everything. I was approved to. Um, for my cab driver license. And after that last one, I, it has, <laughs> it has cost me a lot um, to, to know that not only is this is um, affecting my permit to drive cab, um, but again, I, I hope that within six months I can prove <laughs> so I can come back and reapply for my driver license. And I wish there was some other kind of system where, you know, hey, if you need to pull me in for a drug test or drinking, I would be more willing to do something like that. I'm not a drinker. I don't, I'm not into drugs. I never have been. You know, I wish that was a requirement for other cab drivers also. Any questions of the applicant? 
Alderman Bourne. Ma'am, do you have any other employment besides driving cab? To be honest, no. When the last time I was approved, I was working at Rockline, and then I was picking up extra hours. And right now, you're not you're not driving cab, right? Taxi no, I'm right not. now. Thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Thank you very much. Thank you. Any discussion on the committee report? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Twelve ayes, three noes. Motion carries. Six five long licensing recommending denying taxi driver license ninety seven ninety one. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the committee report be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderwill. Is Angel Estevez here this evening? Yes, he is here. Um, he recently was um, stopped for driving in um, driving a Abbey cab without a license. Um, somebody from the company had borrowed it to him so he could use it to um, pick up some medicine for his child. Uh, the the vehicle wasn't licensed. It was um, there was no proof of insurance, and he was not supposed to be driving it. So that was just one of the one of the issues that we had. Um, there was also. We had also denied him just on December 11, 2012, um, because of the his he had speeding tickets in 2012, um, 2009, and he also in 2006 had disorderly conduct, seatbelt violation, and speeding. Thank you. Would the applicant like to address the council, please. Um, my name is Angel Estevez, and I didn't try to purposely hide nothing. The day my son was sick, the cabs were really busy. There was only two cab drivers that day. So he told me, the cab, the cab guy who runs it, they were here when he said it here too. He borrowed me a cab, and I thought that it would be just like uh, just borrowing a regular car. I did not know, you know, because I don't know the laws about that. I did not know that I couldn't drive it as a civilian to go get the medication. And I looked at the place, the place was good. Everything was good on the car. So I just figured that, you know, I guess I could drive it to go get the medication because he was tied up. That's my son that was sick, <laughs> by the way, hold on. And, you know, I'm appreciative that he did that for me, but I did not know the law that I could not drive a cab that is still counted as driving a cab. I had no fare money on me, no nothing, no ledgers. Hold on. And, you know, the insurance was inside the car. That's going to be proven. And he just recently got the place back for that car. It was like three days over 200 admissions. That's why the place were expired. I was not speeding, so I wasn't doing nothing wrong. But I'm sorry, sorry for that. And, the first time I was denied, there was a mistake in the paperwork of my speeding tickets. And I bought here a copy of my tickets that I had in Fond du Lac County. And there's only two tickets. If you would like to look at them, there's only two speeding tickets here. Give it to the clerk, please. Thanks. Thank you. Do you need this back? And there was only two speeding tickets. It was just that they showed three, but there's the record right there. It was only two speeding tickets. One was, I think, in 06, and one was in 2012. That was last year. And I wasn't trying to hide nothing, but I did go get the copy this time so then they could see that it was correct of what I was saying. And I really do need this job because I need to you know, support my children. and. You know, I'm not trying to live off the taxpayers. You know, right now I'm on disability, but I'm trying to get a job so I can keep my family fed and all that. I'm very sorry. I did not know the laws that you can't. I thought just like you borrowed me your car or something like that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been driving that taxi at the time. Any, any questions for the applicant? 
All the men will start. What taxi company would you be working for? Independent. I won't work for Abbey Cabs. I'll be working for Independent this time. And it was Abbey Cab that borrowed you the vehicle? Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. It was Abbey Cabs that borrowed me the, the cab. And you had the lights for service on the taxi were lit when you were driving the taxi, correct? Yeah, there was no passenger. It was lit, but I didn't, there's no switches in those to turn them on and off. So that's why it stays lit automatically. There's no cargo switch to turn them on and off. And if I would have pushed the button to turn it off, it would have ran the meter as if I did have a passenger, which that would have showed that I was driving for Abbey cabs at the time. And when what the reason you were pulled over is because the plates were expired? Uh, the admissions on the plates. The, the plates were good. It was just the admission. It failed admissions by three days. He thought it, he thought he had like ten more days. They recently got all that fixed, but I think he knew more or less what was going to happen or whatever. I don't know, but he was being nice to me and letting me use the car to get the medicine. But um, I think somebody should have told me that I still couldn't drive as a civilian if he knew the law. So now I will be working, if I was to work for anybody, would be independent cab while I look for another cab company that's more appropriate that would know what's going on. Thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Any other <coughs> questions of the applicant? <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you guys for your time. Any discussion on the committee report? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Eight ayes, seven noes. The committee report is accepted and adopted and denied the license. 6-6 six, six, license recommending denying beverage to operate a license 9849. Alderman Vandeville. Thank you. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that the committee report be accepted and adopted. Is Mark Pucha here this evening? Yeah. He is here. Um, his record of violations include a 1999 felony burglary, a 2000 felony forgery, and then in 2012 he had a sale to underage um, and a unlicensed bartender. Uh, this incident happened at the 921 bar. Um, what had happened was um, the owner had left to go run to the store and he had, um, that's when the absolute 21 came in and he was, he got cited for that. Um, the committee first voted, took a motion to approve the vote. It failed two to three. Then the motion was made to deny the vote and it passed three to two. See the applicant is here. Would you like to address the council? Michael, can you give me your last name? I didn't hear him. It's Pruka. P R U C H A Pruka. Okay. I just, uh, again, like I said at the committee meeting when this went up for a vote about a week and a half ago, it, it was an honest mistake. I did make the mistake, and I admit and accept the mistake that I made that night in serving the under-21 without the operator's license. Um, it was it was a fill-in situation for my owner to run to the store as they've had the new baby. Um, the reason why I'm going for the operator's license now is to try to lend them a hand, keep their payroll down a little bit, just to strictly be kind of a fill-in bartender for them. I'm not gonna shift over as a full-time bartender for them. I've been with them near a year now as their cook back in the kitchen. Uh, so I'm trying to utilize myself as kind of a fill-in role for them when they need a little bit of a, a break for an hour or so type thing. It won't be in all night bartending or anything like that. Um, also, along with that, you know, try to make the situation right, went through the servers course and um, also went through some training with the owner as far as being able to detail the licenses, making sure that I'm checking the licenses, that type of thing, as I hopefully move forward with helping him out with bartending over there. <clears throat> Any questions of the applicant? Alderman Koth. Thank you, Mayor. Um, here's the thing, Mark. Um, you mentioned it's an honest mistake, but there were actually two mistakes that were made. 
Um, first mistake was, well, you've been there a year, kind of know things. Um, so the, the owner left you with patrons that were already at the bar. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the Correct. first mistake. <clears throat> the second mistake is um, you let other people in, serve them cocktails, and they were underage. Correct. So there were two, two honest mistakes. There was two customers in the bar when Tony left the bar. Uh, they were just finishing up their meals. I didn't actually serve them any other drinks. From that point, they finished up their plates of food, and I cashed them out. I uh, took care of their tab that they had running. Um, the only one that I actually did serve was the minor on the under 21 thing, where I did make that mistake. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Any discussion on the committee recommendation? Committee's recommendation is to deny the claim. Clerk will call the roll. Six ayes, eight noes, and one abstention. Motion fails. Our motion carries to deny. No. 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 Motion, fails. motion fails, fails to deny. And then now we have to. Now we need a motion to approve. I'm sorry. Somebody's got to. A motion to grant. Motion to approve. It's been moved in. Second. Seconded to approve the license. Any discussion? Hold on. Call the roll to approve the license. Just give me a second here. Go ahead. Nine eyes, five noes, one abstention. Motion carries to approve the license. Thank you. Six, seven, committee report from Law and License Union recommending denying beverage offer late operators license number 6744. Alderman Vandewoo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to ask again that we refer this back to committee. Um, the applicant was here this evening. Um, there was quite a few mix-ups as far as uh, dates of when he was supposed to be at the meeting, and he did assure me that next week, Tuesday, he will be at our committee meeting. So the motion is to re-refer to committee? Yes. Second. It's been moved and seconded to refer the license back to, or the committee, the license back to the committee. All, the, we'll call, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? Motion carried. Other matters? <clears throat> City Attorney. Seven point one is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2013 and June 30, 2014. That will be referred to law and licensing. Seven point two is an RO by the City Clerk submitting communication from the State of Wisconsin Department of Corrections requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions on behalf of state inmate Christopher Holmes in order for him to be placed in a TLP at either 930A Michigan Avenue or 1123-1125 North 14th Street, depending on availability. That will be sent to Public Protection and Safety. 7.3 is an RO by the city clerk submitting communication from Alder Person Lewandowski stating concerns regarding the fact that the handicapped elevator lift on the north side of City Hall has been removed due to the lack of availability of parts to repair the lift. It states that it's dangerous to have to park on the street, especially in the snow and ice, in order to get the handicap ramp located on the south side of City Hall. That will be referred to Public Works. On the agenda, the uh, notice of going into closed session will is been canceled. So we will look for a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> we move second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Clicker, clicker. <laughs> clicker, clicker. Click, click, click. Bill, Kevin. You gotta paint it again. Gotta hit it again, Bill. Thank you. 15 eyes. We're adjourned.
safety. Stick around for.